Okay, so today I'm annoyed and the reason that I'm annoyed is because I am absolutely sick to death of the unrealistic and ever fucking changing beauty standards that are always put on, let's be honest, mainly women. Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to Weird and Witchy Shit, a place for, well, weird and witchy shit. Here we talk about everything from the magic of yoga, rituals, tarot, crystals, astrology, self-love, mental health, spiritual stuff, spooky things and anything of the mystical variety. So if that sounds like the kind of shit you're into, then you're in the right place my friend. Welcome to the coven. So a lot of it is perpetuated by celebrity culture and this idea that your body can be a trend so types of bodies are like either in fashion or out of fashion like a fucking handbag if you're the same age as me and you grew up in like the 90s and the 2000s you probably lived through the sheer trauma that was known as heroin chic now i don't know about that name but that's kind of how we would describe like the thin gone look that was very very in fashion the whole nothing tastes as good as being thin feels era of living the thigh gap the prominent collarbones and the diet coke and cigarette diet type era i have lived through so many stupid trends like the fucking special k diet where you were encouraged to cut down your meals to two bowls of cereal for either like your breakfast and lunch or breakfast and dinner have one normal meal so that in two weeks you could slim down and be hot enough to fit into a red swimsuit or slim fast being shoved down our throats weight watchers atkins diet the lemonade diet fucking the list goes on literally growing up every single place that i looked was telling me that i was fat and i was not good enough and i think a lot of people probably felt they actually i know a lot of people definitely did feel the exact same when i was growing up it was very again quotation marks in fashion to be super ultra thin so being slim wasn't enough if you were slim you were fat and the only acceptable way to be to be hot or in trend was to be skinny websites and magazines were ripping women apart left right and center if they even gained so much as three pounds and like letting yourself go or gaining like a tiny little bit of weight was the absolute worst thing in the world somebody would literally eat a bagel and people would speculate if oh my god is she pregnant like it was <sighs> Honestly, like, it was so fucking bad. Diet pills were all the rage and pro-Anna websites were unfortunately on the rise and probably ruined so many people's minds, their lives and their view of themselves and other people as well, actually. And then, culturally, there was a shift. With the popularity of the Kardashians on the rise, skinny wasn't sexy anymore, skinny was out, heroin chic was done with and curvy was in. When I was younger having a fat ass was an insult and now having a fat ass is a compliment. So there was like a whole big change there. I remember people like absolutely loving Kylie Minogue in the, I think it was the spinning around music video and she wore the teeny tiny little gold shorts and everybody fucking loved her bum in it because her bum was so little and cute so having a small bum was the best thing in the world and then things kind of shifted and having a big bum was now sexy also there's a whole lot to talk about in that spinning around music video because i remember people talking about kylie minogue looking so good for her age and she was probably in like her 30s and at the time because i was younger i thought Oh my god, like she is literally decrepit. She is literally somebody's 80 year old granny. She looks great for being old. But that's like a whole other topic of discussion that literally enrages me to my core. So now that having a big bum is definitely in and the gaunt look is definitely out, people are going to get the big bum by any means, by squat or by Brazilian butt lift, doesn't really matter, as long as you've got that perfect slim thick look. And it has to be the perfect slim thick look because just being curvy isn't enough. So I would describe myself as probably like curvy where I've got 
got thicker thighs, I've got stomach fat, I've got bigger arms, but that is not the slim thick that's in fashion. For this very particular kind of slim thick, the way that you want to look is your arms have to still be very, very thin, your waist has to be so, 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 so tiny, your belly flat, but your hips have to be huge and your bum has to be huge. Your legs can be thick and curvy, but also toned and shapely at the same time and you can't have cellulite and you can't have stretch marks. So as you can see, probably unattainable for most people. Most people don't have a body like that and most people that you see online have a body like that because they have had surgery or there is it in their pictures and that is just fact. It is highly unlikely that you're going to have huge hips, huge bum, thick thighs and not an ounce of fat on your stomach. That's just not how body fat distributes through your body. And of course, through workouts and exercise routines and stuff, you definitely can change your body shape and you can build your glutes up and stuff. But this unrealistic standard is just impossible. So that has been the body ideal for the past couple of years but just like juicy couture track suits and low rise jeans everything circles back around eventually skinny is back in fashion again. Kim Kardashian has slimmed down her iconic curves in favour of a much more thin look. Even her sister Chloe, who was always shamed for being the fat sister when she was literally never fat changed her body completely when she came back with a revenge body that she says was due to diet and nutrition. There is a lot of speculation on whether she has had surgery or not. I personally believe that she has had surgery but I obviously don't know her in person so I can't speak for her. But even now Chloe has even slimmed down her curves for a more petite physique. It's rumoured that a lot of celebrities are having this rapid weight loss due to a drug that um, is originally for diabetes but one of the side effects of it is rapid weight loss and a complete loss of appetite. And when I hear people talking about this drug and how skinny is back in fashion and the gaunt look is going to be back in fashion, you might have also heard people talking about this buckle fat removal where they get the fat from their cheeks removed so that they have a more like slim gone looking face. Some people have also compared this to the way Tim Burton draws his characters like very skeletal looking features which don't get me wrong if that is like your natural face and you naturally have like a very slim Tim Burton-esque face then that is great for you but my issue is people pushing that this is the standard of beauty that we all have to live up to because most people, me for example, have fat in their cheeks and the only way that I could ever achieve that really super ultra thin gaunt look would be either through extreme rapid weight loss or through surgery. And I am definitely not pinning all these issues right onto the Kardashians because this kind of messaging has been about for women since before the Kardashians were even like born. If you look into advertising campaigns from like the 40s and 50s, it was all about oh you'll never find a man who loves you if you're skinny like and then it kind of like swings right back around. It just so happens that they are what is kind of known as the standard for beauty right now. They kind of set it and they perpetuate it and with their accessibility to surgery and to filters and not always being completely honest about how they're actually getting their bodies. It can definitely be seen as misleading a lot of young vulnerable women into believing that it should also be easy for them just to change their body just like that. At the end of the day the Kardashians have all the money in the world for personal trainers, nutritionists, surgeons, people to edit their pictures. They can easily keep up with the body trends whenever it changes but for most of us just changing your body just like that is 
probably something that we don't have the capability of doing so we are pretty much just stuck with the body that we have and it can be really easy to fall into a state of hating your own body because you're being told that there is only one standard of what is beautiful in a body and unfortunately for you it's not your body. I mean even when I was a teenager I used to think that I was fat. I remember looking at my thighs and my bum because like they always were naturally like a little bit bigger even though all in all I was fucking tiny as a teenager. I was literally like a size 6. I weighed like 8 stone. I was super small but I didn't think I was. I knew that I was slim but because I wasn't skinny I thought that I was really ugly which is ridiculous anyway because even if you are fat you can still be fucking beautiful. Like weight and beauty are two completely different things here. Like you don't have to have one, you don't have to be thin to be beautiful. You can be fat and you can be beautiful. But again, it was just like, I guess like the media that I had grew up around made me feel really unattractive because my body didn't look like the it girls of my time who were like, Kate Moss, Paris Hilton, again very slim. And my body image only got worse after I had my son. So I had my son very young, I was only 16 at the time and after having him my body was so completely different to everything I had ever been told was beautiful. I got stretch marks on my boobs, my stomach, my legs, I had all this stomach fat, my stomach muscles had actually separated and never completely knitted back together so I was left with this line in the middle of my stomach and this kind of patch of fat underneath the bottom part of my belly and I just can't describe to you how truly horrible I felt about myself and still actually I'm trying to unlearn all this thinking now in my 30s. When I look in the mirror, I'm never completely satisfied with how I look ever. I'm always picking myself apart and I am just done with doing that to myself. Like this for me, it really spiralled and grew into years and years of yo-yo dieting and disordered eating and counting calories and binging all the time because I would starve myself then I would binge then I would starve myself then I would binge then I would do a cleanse where I would eat nothing for a whole week and just like flush everything out with this stupid lemonade cleanse that I'd done because Beyonce at the time had apparently done it and that's how she slimmed in for her rolling dream girls and all I wanted in the world was to be skinny. I remember counting the calories in toothpaste. I remember literally standing outside in the middle of December on my veranda in a pair of shorts and a bra freezing because I heard that your body burned more calories when you were cold. This is absolutely unhinged behaviour and at the time I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I just thought well I'm trying to like be skinny like that's the only way I'm going to be beautiful it's the only way that I'm going to love myself it's the only way that anybody's ever going to accept me if I don't look like me and now honestly I just wish that I could go back and give that girl like the biggest hug in the world because it makes me so 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 upset that I thought of myself like that. And that's the thing, then when slim thick came into it, I was more curvy but still not in the right way so I still totally wasn't happy with myself. I had the big bum but I have cellulite and I have stretch marks and I also have fat on my stomach and fat arms so I was still displeased with myself. The body trends completely changed but it still wasn't me so I was still getting this shoved in my face like 
that's not beautiful. What you were striving for for years isn't beautiful anymore. This is beautiful. And guess what? You still don't look like that and you never will. But I can't help but wonder if my exact body type came into fashion, the exact way that I looked, if people were like, okay, here's a picture of Christy and this is what you strive for. I know it's against everything that you've ever been told is beautiful, but this is exactly how you would look. I wonder if then I would love myself and love my body or if I would still find ways to pick myself apart until the next trend came around. I wonder if people who do meet the stereotypical beauty standard ever feel fully satisfied with themselves. I wonder if Kim Kardashian ever looks in the mirror and doesn't pick herself apart. If she looks at herself and she's like, yeah, this is it. Like I am completely happy with myself, I completely accept and embrace every single part of myself or I wonder if she still looks in the mirror and all she sees is flaws even though for everyone else we're all striving to have a body just like hers because I think that she probably feels the same way that we all feel and it's just a shame because it would be so powerful if someone like that came out and was really open and honest about their body and was like here is how I actually achieve my body this is how I actually feel I'm not actually better and like have like fucking superhuman powers that can just snap and my body's like a different shape and it does it makes me really really sad it makes me really sad to think about all the years that I've spent hating myself and continue to say mean things to myself or put off things that I really want to do because I'm worried about how people will think of me or if they'll be judging my body or if they'll be looking at me. Um, even when it came to like dating and stuff, like I would be really anxious to go on dates because my body wasn't the type of body that men would be attracted to. And that's actually like really fucking <laughs> sad to like think about. Even now, like when I go to like stand up in front of a yoga class sometimes and teach, I have this thought in my head where I'm like, is everyone going to be looking at my body and thinking, how the fuck is she a yoga teacher because she doesn't have the yoga body? And yeah, that's like, it's something that I'm still continuing to unpack and unlearn. And I think the first step towards that is definitely just like noticing it and realizing that I'm doing it and doing the stuff that I find scary to do anyway. I actually took so long to get through my yoga teacher training and like become a yoga teacher because I was so worried about my body image and what people were going to think of me and I didn't think I had the right body to be teaching yoga and that's like the exact opposite of what yoga's about and that's like I would tell anyone who would listen like yoga's not about that if you have a body then you have a yoga body but for me it was just so different because I think that you're always going to be your own biggest hater unfortunately but no more I'm changing to be my own biggest uh hype girl I guess I was thinking about this the other day, like I remember like chatting to this girl and she was talking to me about how she loves the look of a yoga body and she didn't know that I was a yoga teacher and I really could have stepped in at that moment and been like, oh like there's no such thing as a yoga body, if you have a body then you have a yoga body, like everyone's welcome in yoga and I just like stayed silent and didn't want I didn't say anything because I didn't want her to have made that comment of like oh I really love how a yoga body looks and then look at my body and be like how can you be a yoga teacher and not have a yoga body that's not what I meant when I said I love a yoga body Ugh. and I'm sure like she wouldn't of thought that in like a bad negative way like in like I'm not saying she would have automatically thought that about me because she was like a bitch I'm saying that she would have automatically probably thought that about me because her just like me it's been so drilled into her head and ingrained into her mind to think this way that's the thing like a lot of like the things that we're actually thinking and like the 
the views that we have and the the horrible thoughts that like come into your head they're not actually your own fucking thoughts they're just thoughts that have been like rammed into you by the media and this change in body trends is just actual proof of that it's like who's to, who's to say if like the media wasn't constantly like drilling into your brain this is what you should look like this is the standard for beauty this is how your brow should look this is how your body should look this is how your hair should look how the hell do you know what you would actually find attractive like what do what do you think is beautiful for you not just because it's something that's been fucking rammed down your throat from the, from the minute that you were born and it's just insane to me that i am in my 30s and i am still learning to love myself and not hate myself and not fucking pick myself apart for every little perceived flaw that I have and I am just done. I am done with trying to fucking adhere to all the beauty standards that people that I don't even care about like set for me. I am just really on this journey of trying to love and embrace myself as I am and talk to myself in a nicer way um and that's it yeah I think that's all that I had to say just wanted to come on here and just ramble for like 20 minutes or half an hour and just kind of let everything all spill out be nice to yourself be nice to others and I'll see you in the next one bye if you'd like to continue the conversation, you can get me on Instagram at Christie's underscore coven. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-S underscore coven. You can also find me on YouTube at Christie's Coven, where I post a lot of free yoga classes and shit like that. And I'd love to have you join, because it's not a coven if it's just me. And until next time, bye!